What's up, everyone? I'm Ernest Baker, Editor-in-Chief at Front Office Sports, and I want to welcome you to Second Acts, a new series where we chat with former athletes who are known for all sorts of achievements in their various sports, but that are now thriving in their second act. Joining me today is Andrew Hawk Hawkins, former NFL wide receiver, sports executive, Shorty Award winning personality, Emmy Award nominated host, and executive producer of an Oscar winning film. At only 5'7", Hawk's seven year NFL career came as as much of a surprise as all the success that he's had after the NFL in media, business, and entertainment. The former NFL team captain also earned his master's degree from Columbia University while playing in the NFL. Most recently, he's a co-founder and president of Status Pro, which is a sports tech company that specializes in XR and is backed by some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment. Hawk, I'm super excited to have you here with us today. I appreciate it, Ernest, man. I'm super excited to be here and really dig deep into this conversation. Let's talk a little bit about how you got into the game in the first place. I mean, what what are some of your favorite memories? You played in college, you played in the pros. Everybody dreams about this type of stuff. You did it. What is it like? Yeah, man, I, I've had so many crazy memories. It's It was my journey was like literally one in a hundred million. And so there's so many different spots. And like at some point it was just like, yo, I cannot believe I'm still doing this, like from reality shows to you know, playing for my childhood team, you know, to getting contracts. I never thought that I would be a guy to get a big contract. The cra- the, the the dopest moment for me was I grew up a Bengals fan as a kid and my older brother played for the Bengals and I would always be rooting for the Bengals to win and they were trash. They were terrible. I'm talking one win, two win seasons. And then I would always be like praying and like trying to like behave in school to be like, yo, just let them get to the playoffs. I just want to see a Hawkins jersey in the NFL playoffs. And then my my first year with the Bengals, man, coming out of the tunnel in Houston versus the Texans, it like hit me and took me back to those moments and like, wow, like I'm actually the person getting to play for the Bengals in the playoffs. So that that was like a surreal moment. I remember I just broke down in tears. I had chills and everything all over my body, man. But it was that was a really cool moment for me. What is something that you learn? What's like a lifelong lesson from being an athlete that even after your playing days, you know, you go through your day now, you go through things like you're doing with your other ventures outside of sports. And you're like, yeah, well, this is what I learned being an athlete that will always help me in life. You know what? The the biggest thing I learned as an athlete was that for me, and this is not for everybody, but this is the advice I give. It's more beneficial to play the long game. Right. Like, I mean, there's there you get caught up so much, especially nowadays in this age of social media and and trends. And it's like one thing happens and everybody just follows on and tries to uh, take advantage of that. You got to find your thing and you got to be OK with letting it play out the process. You know, like with my company now, this is something we've been at since 2015, 2016. Right. And even though I was doing a bunch of other things, this was always the main thing. And anybody who has done business with me on any level knows that this has always been the goal and my football career is what taught me that speaking of your second act when did you when exactly did you start planning for yours i mean you went back to school while you were in the nfl so i know you had to be thinking ahead a little bit but what was the point where you said all right you know i really got to start thinking about what's next this doesn't last forever you know there was there was two like pivotal moments or things that happened for me that like got me in that mindset when I was in college, I had a really bad back injury my second year in college. And I thought I would come back really quickly, and I didn't. And like I'm like, wait a minute. That was the first time in my mind I may not go to the NFL, which someone would say, like, yo, you were 5'7". I can't believe that was the first time you thought that you weren't going to go to the league. But for me, it was, right? And so I started doing, like, some, you know, internships and things in the offseason while I was in school. But then the other big thing that I think w- was most beneficial to me um, was the fact that after college, I didn't get picked up anywhere. Like I was like down bad, you know, and I was like living on somebody's couch. I was working in a factory. I was working as a caddy to to, to pay rent. Um, and I was trying to pedal my resume and like, hey, I played football on the division one level. I want to work in sports and it didn't work. Nobody was calling me back. Nobody was bringing me in for interviews. Nobody was giving me internships. You know, like I there are companies now that represent me or have been beating down my door to represent me that would not give me an internship in those moments. Right. And so. For me, it was like, it kind of hit me like, man, I felt like I wish 
I wish I would have put my energy into something else because there's nothing benefiting me in this moment. And so as fate would have it, and I was lucky to get my career going again um, and end up in the NFL when I got to the league, my mindset was completely different. From day one of being an NFL player, it was laser set on what am I going to do when I'm done? I tried to retire after my first year in the NFL because my goal was to play one game. And I wanted to be able to play one game and say, hey, I was right. You guys were wrong. I did it and I'm done. And my brother convinced me to say, hey, you might be able to get a second contract. You can get a pension. And my mind was just like so far from that. I was ready to go tackle the world. And so, yeah, by the time I got to the NFL, because I had already seen what the end of my career looked like, my mindset was completely different. But I want to ask you, you did all that planning and thinking about your post football life, but then what's something that surprised you once you actually got to it? Like what, what's it like once you're no longer on the field for real? For as much as I prepared, right. And I, and I, I did a lot, man. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I invested into myself. I did internships. I'm talking under armor. I'm talking, I was making marketing brochures for agencies while I was in the NFL for other agencies. I was, you know, going back to school at Columbia, interning with Maverick Carter. Um, and even as prepared as I was for the next chapter of my life and is, you know, what people would think is the most se seamless looking transition they've seen in a while for someone of at least my stature as an NFL player, there was still uh, such a period of like having to get comfortable with not competing anymore. Like I, for I for years I had prepared for that right and I thought I was ready and I didn't want to play football at all and I still there's never been a day where I said I wish I was still playing football that's how ready I was to move on but even still the whole identity of like this is who you are you've done it for your entire life this is a relationship that you've had for 20 plus years and it's not there anymore you know you you it being gone was such an adjustment for me even still as prepared as I was and I think that was a little bit of a surprise still having to settle in this this thing that had been a part of my life forever not being there you know you're looking at media opportunities in the near future but as someone who came into the league thinking about what it would be like when you exited the league now that you're in your second act firmly what are you thinking about for the next several years for where this whole thing goes for you you know i me and me and my family didn't grow up with a bunch of means right we were on like a certain side of the tracks and um football and sports unlocked a new economic frontier for us and our family and our children. Our children, you know, have grown up differently than we have. And we have football to thank for that, right? And I think for me, my thing was I, I, I'm always nervous to get an opportunity that I'm not prepared for and that I can't make the most out of because opportunities are very hard to come by. It doesn't matter what industry or sector you operate in. And so I always want to make sure I'm making the most out of it. Um, and so for me, coming into my second act, I was really focused on like raising the floor, right? Like, well, if I can, if I can do a bunch of things, if I do 10 things and two of them hit or one of them hit, then I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. Right. I won't have to go back here. I won't be one of the, the horror stories um, that you see from, from a lot of former athletes or that, you know, you read about in the media. And then I think as I've gone and I've like, again, thrown all these things at the wall, a high percentage have hit right and it's like it starts to hit it even at a uh, at a rate that i'm even surprised at so i think my mindset has changed from raising the floor to now i'm at a point as i'm like well you know i've done it enough now like i alluded to earlier to, to have confidence and what i can do and what i bring to the table and how i think about things and the process and my uh and my how intentional i am and my uh my detail now i'm like what does the ceiling look like now I want to make this thing as big as it possibly can be. And I think that's been the biggest change for me is, you know, probably operating from a defensive uh, POV to now it's I'm on the offensive. I'm on go. I want to I want to have it all because I know I'm going to put the work in. And, um, you know, I'm confident that, you know, once I make those decisions, that things will come to fruition. Yeah, you know you can do it. No reason to be scared. Not to say that you ever were, but once you get in there, nah. once you once you you might have been. <laughs> No, it, that's the truth. Absolutely. And I think I have a little bit, not even a little bit. I know I have imposter syndrome. In the NFL, I was very much like that. Like people, I was not a fun guy to be around in the NFL because I was so serious and I like was such a perfectionist. And I was like, I would have nightmares about people saying we were right about you. 
we told you so. We knew you couldn't do it. And I think that's carried over a little bit into my second act. But now I am now where it's like you stack enough wins and you understand the market a little more. And it's like, you're right. Once you're out there and you're doing it, you're like, hey, I'm confident now. I'm confident I can do this and I just got to keep doing me. So that's kind of where I'm at. If Raina's thinking about retirement, she'll get some help from Fidelity to envision what's possible and balance risk and reward. And with a clear plan, Raina can enjoy wherever she's headed next. That's the planning effect from Fidelity. Now let's talk about your latest business venture, Status Pro. I'm excited to have Troy Jones join the conversation for this part too. Troy is a co-founder and CEO. He's a former Division I quarterback. Troy, what's up? How you doing today? Hey, what's up, Ernest? I appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can get right into it. Uh, I want to ask both of you, when were you first exposed to AR and VR? And how did you come up with the idea for Status Pro in the first place? Yeah, I, I'll jump in and I'll let Troy piggyback. I mean, for, for me, it was, you know, I, I played in the NFL. My older brother played in the, the NFL. And when he got done playing, he he wanted to get into coaching and he was told he didn't have enough experience. And for me, that created a problem that I thought was worth solving. And so I set out to kind of develop a mobile app that would connect people with real life experience with the people who would benefit from that experience. And in that scenario, it was the amateur athlete. And so as I was building that, this is while I was playing, this is like 2015 or 16, I was trying to figure out and think about what was the next step. And, you know, if people came on and, and, and copied onto this idea, what was going to keep us out in front? And so I tried to think big and I thought it'd be really cool if in that scenario, my brother could coach somebody as a hologram. And I had no idea what AR or VR was. And I was like, is this technology anywhere near close to being possible? And they had these big headsets with all these wires. But it was it was along those lines. And that's kind of where my mind started going like, man, this is this is incredible technology that can affect the the world of sports, which is typically last to, to jump on to some of the innovative things that are going on in the tech space. And that's originally how me and uh, Troy linked up, because he was actually doing that for Mixed River and already on that wave of trying to affect the game uh, of football and sports in general with the technology. Yeah, from my end, um, you know, for me, after I got finished playing in college, I was just trying to figure out, okay, how can I still make an impact on the game that I love independent of playing? Um, so I was fortunate to get the opportunity to work at the NFL Players Association. And during that time, I started really honing in on, okay, what are the problems that the NFL, the NFLPA and the clubs are trying to solve for? And obviously a big one was mitigating the physical impact that, that comes with playing the game. Um, another thing that stood out was the, the next gen stats player data uh, the DNFLPA was looking for ways to, to help enhance player performance. Um, so I actually got introduced to, to VR at a football camp. One of my close friends who played in the league was hosting a camp um, and two gentlemen brought out the technology and approached me and said, hey, we heard you work at the DNFLPA. We heard you used to play quarterback. Um, there's some technology we want to show you because we think this can help athletes. So I put the headset on. Um, it actually was a Microsoft HoloLens at the time. So an AR device, not exactly VR. Um, and then I just saw little holograms kind of in black figures running around. They were saying, we think this can help athletes, but we don't know the use case. Um, and immediately, obviously, being a former quarterback, I saw how you could potentially turn those those blocks into actually actual players and, and simulate reps, which we all need to do. Right. As a quarterback before a game, I used to go over coverages and, and blitzes and visualize myself checking that out. Hawk used to do the same thing when he had, you know, choice routes and, and going through things in his head before the game. So it was really just seeing this innovative technology, understanding the problems that we were facing just in the sport as a whole and um, and wanting to solve it. So there's this idea of taking that data and then using that to recreate real life scenarios that have occurred in games came to life. And and, and we built that application and and, and uh, took it to a few teams and, and the rest was history. Nice. Well, can you really take us into the tech behind Status Pro? I mean, what's the experience like? Because the NFL, sports across the board, they are tech savvy to the point where they're using it to look at coaching decisions, to look at, you know, ex exercise statistics, nutrition. Uh, there's certainly an element of tech that is informing how players train and the type of decisions they make. So what's the experience of Status Pro that really sets it apart from everything else that's available? Yeah, I, I would say just the way we apply it, to be honest. I mean, you know, we didn't invent uh, XR or augmented reality or virtual reality. It's a tool. And to Troy's earlier point, like we have the benefit of actually 
having to get better as players, right? And when it comes to sports, we know what would have helped us in our career. And so when we got into the space and using the technology, we understood that the gap that we could sit in, we understood we could be a bridge between some of this innovative technology and how the teams actually apply it on a day-to-day or the regular processes of coaches or players or things that that we know that players benefit from and the way they approach it from an elite sports side. And so, you know, we always say, like, you take a football and it's the same football, whether I give it to you, Ernest, or I give it to Tom Brady, it's the same football. It's a matter of one of you can do something better with the football than the other person can. It's not me, right? I'll tell you that. And it's not you, Ernest, unfortunately. So for us, it was the same thing. We took the technology and, you know, we sat, sat in these rooms and we just had these conversations and really sketched out the way that we thought this could affect sports and also speak the language um, to get early, earlier adoption then, you know, you see some of the innovative tech typically get in, in in sports. Yeah, just to piggyback on that, and I'm glad he picked on you, Ernest. Usually he makes fun of me with that and <laughs> says, <"Joy, good." laughs> You were an actual quarterback, though. Exactly, so it's a little bit more offensive. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, on top of everything Hawk said, I think it's also, um, again, the data as well, right? There's understanding that this data is, is new and people were looking to use it. So for us, we also try to let that inform everything that we do. So when you are in the experience, you're having that one-to-one scenario that actually occurred in the game. And this, that just helps the coaches process a little bit better, helps the athletes be able to, to relate to the product because they actually can recognize the play that's being ran. And I think when you combine that with, like Hawk said, the actual application and knowing what problems they're trying to solve, um, it just sits in the sweet spot of innovative technology and, and really driving uh, innovation on that side, but then also really solving a problem so everybody's open to it and, and willing to, to use it. Well, even more than just the conceptual idea of what this tech does, I mean, you all partner with Lamar Jackson. Like, this is, you have a real-life example of, of working with, you know, arguably the best in the league, in my opinion, but definitely one of the best across the board. And how exactly does he contribute to Status Pro? How did that partnership come about? Yeah, so we've been at this for... A number of years now like you know troy and i originally first connected i believe it was 2016 into 2016 um and so we had a long relationship we we've kind of built this version of status pro over the last three and a half years and lamar was one of the early people that said hey this is like it feels in the game like tell me more about it like this is this is cool from a a fan engagement standpoint imagine giving people the opportunity to see what i see out there but then also from a training side and so you know, we had that relationship with him and it, it was really crucial, especially in the early days of at least being a confirmation to Troy and I that we had something special. Um, you know, and the, and the relationship has continued to grow since then. And some of the partnerships that we have now um, are a root of those those early, early days of us forming those bonds. Right. We have the NFL partnership um, and licensing deal, which is obviously huge. And, you know, we'll be bringing out the first consumer VR gaming product the NFL has ever done. Um, and the first simulation game, you know, out, outside of outside of Madden in a very long time. So we're excited about the challenge um, and everybody that's been a part of it from, from the early stages to get us to this point. Yeah. Can you guys tell me more about that NFL game? We wrote about it over at Front Office Sports. Seems really cool. It seems groundbreaking. Just how the work with the NFL is going in general. Any other teams, any other players that you're working with, uh, whatever you can let us know. Yeah, so I'll kick it off with the game. Um, you know, we're excited about about the title. Our, our goal at Status Pro, we say we're democratizing the experience of the professional athlete. Um, so when we think about what this experience is going to be, more will be revealed later. But just imagine just finally being able to see the game in a way that you never have. Um, seeing something from the player's perspective, having a one-to-one experience and really sharing that. So to so your point around Lamar, it, it was awesome to, to get the, the validation from a player who is one of the most dynamic players in the NFL. So because when we think about authenticity, you want that validation from those players because that's what we're promising the fans that they'll have. Um, so again, the, the game will be something that, again, truly will change the way people can consume sports. I think it's going to uh, find itself a, a nice sweet spot in the weekly process as someone is, is prepping for their games on Sundays that they want to watch. Um, and we're excited about it. You know, both of you really mentioned with a lot of passion giving back, empowering the next generation of, of young people, of young Black people to get into tech and the spaces that you all are in. Um, but on a on a ground level, how do you see yourselves executing that? Yeah, like Hawk said, if you sat in on a Troy and Hawk conversation, some people would think we're crazy, but we talk about this every day. Um, I think 
we have several programs, internships, ideas of, of how, how do you bring in people into the space that typically wouldn't get exposure to it. Um, and on top of that, specifically even helping athletes, right, that are transitioning and trying to find their second act, identify passions and, and, and new ways to like be involved in sports that, in the way that they probably wouldn't have saw themselves when they first started playing, right? To piggyback off of him, I, like, you know, our, our team currently, we're, we're around 40. Of the 40, I want to say 18 of them are former college or beyond athletes, right? And that duality is what we're trying to bring forward in the game because we want the, the experience to be authentic. But we also want to act, again, as a, as a, as a role model in a, in a place where people can look to both, you know, of diverse backgrounds and, you know, women to say, man, you know, this is a place where I can go there and flourish and it, it can be a stop for me to get me closer to my goal and where I want to end up. That's what we want Status Pro to stand for. Well, I'm really excited to see what uh, you all cook up next. Troy, I really thank you for joining the conversation. Love everything, you know, you brought to the table. A lot of great insights there. And, you know, I can't wait to hop in the game as soon as that's ready. No, man, I appreciate you having me. And I look forward to you trying it out. You got to let us know your thoughts. So, Hawk, I want to thank you for sharing your incredible story. Uh, You're clearly living your best life in your second act. And I'm really excited to see what you do in media what you do in the whole entire industry of sports, what you do with Status Pro. I'm looking forward to the future and thanks for sharing your story with us. Thank you, Ernest. It's been an honor to join you here on Second Act. 